Okay, traders, done for the day. As you can see here, I'm green for the day and a nice green day, really, with my leading trade in Tesla over $23,000. I've got a nice trade in Boeing, actually two trades in Boeing. One was a losing trade, second one moved me very nicely to green territory. However, uh, two losing trades in JMA, one of them is very small and the other one is like a normal losing trade. A small loser in space, but uh, again, the end result is very well. I'm going to talk today about market direction. I mentioned that throughout uh, the whole session today and I'm going to continue talking about it because uh, right now, because I think it's important to understand that's what really moved me to green territory today. And I just want you to understand the, 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 the concept of a big gap down. When we have a big gap down, and it doesn't matter if it's a stock or it's the S&P 500, then it's likely to continue. It's supposed to be a gap and go. Not always, but more yes than no. So look at the S&P 500. We started right over here. We started with a big gap down today. I believe it was 1.3% or so. Anyway, S&P started with a gap down, initial move down, first 10 minutes, you don't really know what's coming, trying to move higher. Then I was expecting it to fail. The whole idea of a gap down is that there will be some pressure up. There will be some bottom fishing. There will be some people who would uh, buy falling knives. There's always these people. And in fact, there's a lot of out, uh, uh, open orders for people who are saying, well, if the market is going to come to this level, I'm going to buy. Some of them of people who don't really watch the market. So there's normally a pressure for the upside when the market is starting down, then you expect an upside move, but then you expect a failure. I thought the failure may come here, you know, the first, the first move up. It did not. It started, it moved down. That's when I had a few losing trades. I mean, my first winning trade, which put me in green territory, was right over here. When the market initially came down, I had a nice trade in Tesla. As it came down, I was very quick with my partial because I really didn't trust the market direction. But then the market stopped and moved higher. Tesla moved with the market. You could take a look at Tesla. It's on the left of the S&P 500, right over here. So Tesla moved higher. The S&P moved higher. At that point, I thought, well, maybe that would be the high. It's, you know, you expect the market to fail and come down, but you don't really know when. That's the tricky part about it. You don't really know when. So at that point, although I had a very nice trade in Tesla to start with, I moved into red territory with two losing trades. However, that was a small red. I mean, I was down like three grand or so at that point. After starting with Tesla, I believe I was up like $12,000 but then move down uh, to red territory. So then the market continued to come up. And again, I'm waiting for a failure, waiting for a failure. And I did mention in the room, be careful. The market is not supposed to continue much higher, if at all. Be careful. If you're going to go long, you may experience the pullback at that point, which did come. So look at what happened. The market did do what it normally does. And when I say normally does, it's more than 50%. Is it 60 or 65%? Probably around that area. Does not mean it's not going to be all the way up again and close the gap or something like that. It's not normal, but it may happen. So, you know, when I'm taking like a 65% chance that I'm right, that's what I should do. And when I saw the market starting to come down at some point, I said, well, that's a bit more than just a small pullback. Okay, let's short again. So at that point, I shorted BA quite high. And I shorted Tesla again quite high, expecting the market to fail, expecting Boeing and Tesla to come down. And that what finally put me in a very green territory. So I was really waiting for something that happens more than 50% of the time. And if it does happen more than 50% of the time, that's where I should be and that's where you should be. So I'm not always, I'm not saying you should always show the market when you think that the market should fail and, you know, and maybe you don't have the right timing and so on. But if you are long, how about reducing your size? If you are long, how about taking an early profit? Assuming that the party is not going to continue because the market did start with a big gap down and likely to fail. So think about everything, just not, not, not necessarily, okay, I'll go short. You can definitely think about reducing your size, 
not getting to a new long trade. All of the things should be things that you should consider at that point. And I mentioned quite a few times that I'm, you know, uh, sitting beside, not taking, uh, not, not, not participating, just waiting for the market to fail. It did fail. I did participate and I did move back to green territory. Well, hopefully that was um, a good day for you as it is for me. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed today. I did. Definitely did. Looking forward to trade with you tomorrow, which be which is going to be my last day of trading this week because on Thursday, flying with the with the family to the Seychelles for a week. So, I'm gonna take a holiday starting this Thursday. We'll be here tomorrow, so enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for participating. Thank you guys on YouTube. Please give us a thumb up. We will really appreciate that, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, traders.